of sudden committing to order and want to welcome everyone to this morning's hearing of the fiscal year 2009 research and development budget for the Department of Homeland Security. This is our second hearing on the DHS R&D budget for the Public Sector Congress, and I hope that we will be able to devote at least some of our time today to learning more about the department's accomplishments for the past year. Now, the Martin Seaton administration is demonstrating a better understanding of the need for research and development in support of Homeland Security goals by increasing its requests from both the Science and Technology Director and from our State Nuclear Protection Office. And I'm somewhat disappointed that many of the issues that arose during last year's budget hearing remain unresolved or only partially on their way to resolution. Despite a request from this committee and others, this year's budget request was begun without the guidance of a, of a comprehensive risk analysis that justifies the balance between R&D areas such as biological countermeasures, nuclear protection, cybersecurity, preventive explosive mitigation, and others. DHS and the team did release a strategic plan last year for which we commend it and we appreciate that effort. That plan did little to answer the questions about planning and priorities. Disappointed that we do not have better answers about how DHS makes important decisions about where to invest limited resources for R&D. From other Secretary, uh, Cohen and Director Oxford have done an admirable job at integrating the needs of the mission components of DHS into their research and technology development plan. This subcommittee continues to hear complaints of outreach and does not trickle down to make research outside of DHS. State and local officials, and especially first responders, a crucial part of our domestic security enterprise, continue to fail that they are shut out of the process of identifying gaps in capabilities and setting research priorities. Today, I'd like to hear about an action plan from how the SET Director and DMDO will ensure that stakeholders outside of DHS are fully integrated into the research plan process, that their costs and operational needs are met before any technologies are considered ready for deployment. Based on the other material that we discussed during this hearing, is how the SET Director and DMDO conduct testing and evaluation of technologies and how the results of those tests are used to guide decisions about procurement. According to the Department's budget request, more than half the funding that the SET Director will go to a product transition and one-third of the DMDO funding will go toward systems acquisition. With a strong emphasis on end stage technology development and acquisition, and high quality, trustworthy testing is imperative for the department's mission. Concerns have been raised about DHS testing and evaluation efforts, some of which have come under close scrutiny by this committee and others. By the end of the day, if end users cannot trust that technology works, it will not take advantage of the many benefits that all of the technology brings to the day to day activities of the Homeland Security workforce. This should take note that the steering that comprised the entire end of the planet, we have to conclude by commending all of the works and successes. We discussed last year the value of this in research for the public security mission, and I submit this year's budget request will make a massive research investment for the SET Directorate will reach under Secretary Cohen's goal of 20%. Additionally, the FDA plans to increase their investment in transportation and transformational R&D. A strong investment in basic research keeps DHS S&T flexible and capable of responding to emerging threats quickly. Moreover, much of this money ends up funding academic research that helps build a skilled science and engineering workforce capable of meeting Homeland Security-related research needs for many years to come. Of course, the S&T committee always likes to see more and more care research but this is, I think, appropriate first step. So, at any rate, I am committed to working with the Department of Homeland Security to ensure that R&D investment is successful in reaching our, uh, our in, in increasing our knowledge of how to confront uh, catastrophes, whether from human or natural causes. We look 
recorded the day of our witnesses, uh, that uh, there are developments that occurred at that time uh, to which we need to respond. And uh, one of those developments uh, is the uh, new story in the Scarlet's in the Washington Post this morning. Uh, it was our technology that was originally focused on the border fence, but it addresses many other issues that DHS works on, both including airport security and some of those other technologies that we've been talking about. Unfortunately, when there was a response to the back pages of the Washington Post, uh, Mr. Ignatius quoted uh, extensively some from Secretary Trenchcock, and apparently it was the Secretary's uh, approach sources external to the department uh, as the cause of many of the department's uh, problems. I would like to remind everyone for a moment that we had a set of bridge like hearings that we would like, high like bridge like hearings, which were an attempt to be helpful uh, to the research efforts at DMEO and at the SEC Director. These were not classic Washington, D.C., gotcha type of hearings. And they were not intended as such, and they were not executed as such. But they expressed serious concerns about whether user groups were being properly consulted, whether gaps in technology were being properly addressed, whether there was a proper allocation between basic research and applied research, whether there was too much of a tendency to fight the fire for day rather than to have a comprehensive approach to addressing risks and whether indeed risk assessment was being properly used to inform limited research results. There has not been enough progress made in the 12 months between last year's hearing and today. 12 months from now, there will be a change in administration. And no matter who is in charge at the top, the crucial mission of DHS will remain. I, for one, am um, somewhat frustrated at the pace of progress and um, would like to consider what mechanisms are necessary to ensure that in the coming months, um, in the last months of this administration, that we continue to press forward uh, with sufficient aggressiveness to address the issues which were identified in year one and which we will focus on today. And with that, I would like to uh, recognize my colleague and ranking member uh, from Georgia, Dr. Bill Lee, to end his opening remarks. General Chairman Mullen, uh, I want to thank you for holding this uh, hearing this morning. I know you've been on the FBI since yesterday, as you know, based on the last year's call for Homeland Security's ongoing efforts to get something developed. Our nation's scientific enterprise remains at a strategic period at critical components of our nuclear security. The efforts of the domestic nuclear defense markets in the science and technology market contribute to the prevailing of our nation uh, against potential terrorist attack and coordination disasters as well. These organizations tap into the limitless creativity of our nation's scientists and engineers leading to the main benefit for our first responders, our guardsmen, our local colonel and nearby police, our firefighters, and our peaceful activists. These offices within DHS are vital components to our homeland security strategy, and I certainly want to thank the panel for their leadership. I also want to thank all the men and women who work with you to bring the skills of our nation's scientists and engineers to bear to protect us from threats we would not face. You and I perform a great service in this country and should be recognized for your work. Mr. Chairman, last week the Food Science and Technology Committee unanimously formed the Border Security Technology and Innovation Act of 2008, uh, which was sponsored by Bruce Hamilton and the Chamber of Representatives of the Food Committee, Mr. Ron Paul of Texas. This bill acknowledges the crucial role that science and technology play in protecting our nation's borders. Today, I expect you'll hear from our witnesses that this 
Christ in the church is what we call it. And we have Kenneth Clark on this issue. And then in Iowa, in this innovation, we go forward and tell them, yes, you can. Yes, we can. And change the world with the same thing. And so I share with you that Francis I saw them in Union Avenue. This is my third time testifying before this panel in this position. And both of the four meetings are on the Union Department of Business. Everyone was here on the Union Department of Business and we decided that and the goal was that we can create a better Iowa society out here as we have done this thing. And I go into my organization, I have a Ford Max. And you guys did things like the end of the organization I have and I did it completely right when I came out of the as a major member of the Office of Personal Management. I evaluated my organization and spent it by that year, and then I ranked 222 out of 222 federal organizations. So at the end of my tenure, I achieved 221 out of the 222 because I was one of the last. And I think we've done a lot better than that because we had 60% So it's an exciting time. We have to get the books right. And this is where the Bank of the Legislation and the board today, by Frank Williams, my chief financial officer, we came on board the same year, came out of this 2006. You may remember that was the day that the Hoover Explosives Plant in Rockville, Illinois, was going and we've all been since. And then finally, if you get the people right and get the organization right, you can get the books right and you can have the program. That has been the focus of my last year and my year as the chairman of the House Committee. It's absolutely my focus in the transition. And so the four meetings, the four gaps, we testified to that before. I think it brings us to a place where I'm now focused on the four themes. I want to assure you that I have an entire transition tool because then I run out of words and I'm out of the bag. But what are the four themes? The first is people. And that enables everything we do, especially the science and technology. The next is process. And we've invited your members and every great time and your staff to come to all of our places, whether it's the Athletic Product Team, whether it's basic research reviews and field trips, or our outreach stakeholder conferences. And then we've invited us to go, as has the IG, I believe, in open processes. And then it's the processes and the five year budget and the priorities that will operate me and this administration as it did when I took office in Iowa and served here for six years. The third is partnerships. And I know Chairman Allen spoke with many people here for the enabling legislation to help leverage it from urban components to urban, international, U.S., industry, and of course our heroes, the customer customers, the first responders, and the border folks that serve up. And so if we get the people right and we get the processes in place and programs to that, and we have, I think, partnerships to save the taxpayers money, not to make a big effort. In the end, we make the majority do the power. And the power is what we're trying to get out, not only to the 22 components and directors, our immediate customers of DHS, but also the customer customer, the first responders. And I know they're very close to that. And so, as always, I welcome your oversight. I welcome your questions. I appreciate very much your bipartisan support from science and technology as it continues in the state of Iowa. And it is more so because of my direct experience at the administration doing my very best to charge to the wall and turn on the best science and technology and support the major innovation sector in our economy. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Mr. Secretary, Dr. Oxford. Good morning, Chairman Williams. Thank you very much for the distinguished members for such a meeting. I'd like to thank the committee for the opportunity to discuss the decision to have a priority for the fiscal year 2009. And I hope you look forward to the date that this committee will meet in May and the rest of the fiscal year. Before I go into detail on our priorities for 2009, I'd like to share some key accomplishments from the transition last year to today. In December, we looked at the urgent pandemic goal of expanding 90% of our incoming cargo with goods to ports. Three years 
Thank you. 